Hey Techno Studs, in this video, we're going to take a look at the FTP traffic that goes across between our demo laptop and our demo Pi using Wireshark. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Wireshark. So I'm on my demo laptop. I'm going to open up Wireshark and we're going to monitor this ethernet connection. So now I'm monitoring that ethernet connection. I'm going to open up the, uh, my, F, my file server, uh, FileZilla. That's my FTP client software that's going to connect to the FTP server. And so I'm going to connect to my demo Pi, which is 10.1.0.3. The username is demo Pi and the password is demo Pi. I'm going to do a quick connect. It's going to warn me I'm connecting with clear text. So my password will go across clear text. I'm going to say that's okay. Let's, let's do this. And then it's going to uh, make a connection and show the directory. So I'm gonna click on the directory files. We've got within there, we've got this test file that we created in a, our last video or in a couple videos ago. And I'm going to copy it over to my computer just so we can generate some traffic with that. And we'll, we can see what that traffic looks like. So once it's done with that, uh, I can actually get a message that says it's finished. What I'm going to do is disconnect from this server now. So I'm going to disconnect and we see some, uh, some um, stuff happening on our Wireshark. We're going to take a look at Wireshark and what that looks like. I'll close out of FileZilla and then we will stop capturing on our Wireshark. Now on Wireshark, we've captured 179 packets. So I just want to look at this FTP traffic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter based off of our IP address. 10.1.0.3 just so we just see the traffic that's going back and forth between these two devices. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through here and look at you can see several requests come for a or a couple requests come for a username and password. And so then let's take a look at what the return is. So the first thing that we'll look at is this packet 42 here. It is sending the information that the demo pi requested, which is the username and password. So this 42 is coming from the demo laptop and going to the demo pi and it says that the user is demo pi all right and then uh, we see a couple lines down and it's saying the password is demo pi also so the demo pi the thing that i want to point out here is is that this demo pi is listed in clear text so that's showing you that this is insecure in our current setup while we're using ftp we see then the demo pi does respond with login successful. So it has a login successful that it returns back. As we scroll through these, we can see we get a little further down. There's a request for this is coming from the demo uh, from the demo laptop and going to the demo pi. And it is giving the command PWD. D, which means present working directory. It's the same thing that you would type in with a, a Linux command. And we see that the response is the directory is slash or root. We call that root. So it returns that back and it has the current working directory. And then it goes through and asks uh, a little bit further on here uh, to a list. It requests a list of what's inside this directory. And then we see an established, uh, what it does is it establishes a second connection with this. So it's opening up a second TCP connection with this on a different port. So it opens that up. And then we see an actual data that gets sent back and forth. And if we look at the data that's sent back and forth, we see down here in inside the packet, it's actually giving you a uh, some information on the directory that you're that that is also in here, which is files. So there is a directory called files within the root directory that we're that we're in listed as files and it's sending that information back. So a couple things that I want to point out with this is it is an FTP dash data connection that they have that it's established. It's a separate connection. It's, so it's established the second, second connection to make this communication happen. The other thing that we notice is that it's using port. If we look at the port here, the uh, it's going from the uh, demo pi. So the source port here 
is 63,635. And so the source port is this very large number. It's not, so we're seeing that this data is being transferred on a separate port. And you know, so what we have already said in one of our prior videos is that data will be transferred on port 21, but it doesn't have to be port 21. It depends on the type of traffic. In fact, sometimes it'll be port 20, sometimes it'll be port 21. In this case, it's port 63,635. So it will vary a little bit, but traditionally uh, that gets sent on port 20, the data on port 20, and then the rest of this is happening on port 21. All that communication, all that controlled data is happening on port uh, 21. So then we look uh, further down. It's now got this directory of, of files in here. If we look a little further, we see a change working directory. So it changes working directory. The request is to a change working directory slash files. And it's, it responds with, the demo pi responds with, it's been successful. And then there's a request for the per present working directory. And the response is present working directory is slash files. So you see this communication that's going back and forth. When you execute a command, then it, then it will send that command and then it will return Return information. And uh, uh, so let's see, let's look. Oh, and then we see a list right here. It It's listing now, now the files that we got. And if you recall, what was inside of the files was a text document. And so let's take a look at see what that text document is. It establishes yet another TCP connection. And then it does the data transfer here. So, and it is saying there is, like we just mentioned, a test.txt that's within there. So uh, it establishes this TCP connection, it transfers the data, and then it terminates that TCP connection. It is using a different port than what we saw earlier. So this port uses 14,575. Okay, so then we go through here and uh, we see a request to for the test.txt and then we see it now yet another it establishes yet a different tcp connection with a different port here and um let's see as we go down i want to actually do that that data trans transfer. So here we go. Here, here's the FTP data transfer that happens. We see right before it, it establishes this 19,455 port. We see then the data actually gets sent across. If we were to actually look in the data down here, this is a test. So if I were to open up what is inside that file, it, it in, in fact says this is a test. So we can actually read the contents of that file that was transferred over. And then it then uh, uh, terminates that communication, that TCP connection that it did. So we see that that once again, all of that control data is happening on the port 21, but then when we go to do execute some of these data transfers, what will happen is it will establish a second connection and transfer on that second, second connection, whether it's that second connection happens on port 20, as we mentioned before, or it could happen on one of some of these other ports choosing a random ephemeral port or choosing, um, can, there are some times where data will go across 21. Uh, for the purposes of most tests that you'll see, just, con just consider that it's using port 21 and 20. But as we see in reality, it can use other ones depending on the type of data that's being transferred. So there you have it. So there is some of the different packets that go back and forth with, these, with this uh, FTP connection. Um, and so that way we can see that uh, how it communicates and that's what we took a look at here within Wireshark. Thanks for watching my videos. If you like them, could you hit that like button because it really helps me out.